I'm just going to show some of the options that uh, are available in Engine Driver and um, and some of the, explain some of the reasons why you might want to use them. Uh, I've got two phones set up here, uh, pretty much the same. But the first thing I'm going to do is go and reset them. So that's one of the things that uh, that's built in here that's worthwhile knowing about. If you ever get yourself into a situation where it's configured strangely and you just want to get back to a unknown state, you can run the reset. So I'm going to do it on both. So preferences, right down the very bottom. Preferences, right down the very bottom. And then under Import Export Reset, select that and hit the Reset button. It doesn't ask for any any confirmation. So if you do it, it's it's just gone. It's done. Do the same in here. Reset. Okay. And it's then worthwhile exiting out and coming back in again. So I'm going to exit out of both. Um, yeah, go straight back in. All right, so that's back to the standard standard configuration. Um, but the only thing it hasn't that doesn't reset is the function key defaults. Um, it does everything else. So um, if we have a look at some of the options that are, are worth, I think are worth looking at. So if we go into preferences. First thing is you really should set up your throttle name. Uh, the default name of engine driver and a random number um, it, it's perfectly fine if you've only got a home layout but if you're working in a club environment for example um, it will show up the, um, the whatever you've got in there on the Y throttle console uh, I won't do that just now but anyway uh, screen orientation for a phone really stick with with um, portrait it's doesn't really work very well in landscape to be honest. If you've got a tablet however uh, the other options come into play. Auto web I won't go into right now but that's another one that's worth looking at. Themes and styles, well it's entirely perfectly a personal choice. Um, if you like the default theme, great. Um, I have a preference to the high contrast outline theme but the moment you change it what you really need to do is uh, restart. So now we've got that, that black theme with the outlines. Um, so what we'll do is we'll connect up to a server uh, and you can see how different they look. Um, now I've obviously cleaned out the extra um, function button buttons there, which is why that's not showing up. That's why I said a reset doesn't clear that. So if I select a loco, I'll select the same lower loco in each one. Uh, and you can see how different they look. This the, the default theme truncates the um, uh, the labels that are coming down from uh, JRMI. Uh, the other two themes don't. So if we look at some of the other options we might set, um, if we keep going down the list, um, show layout power button really depends on the um, uh, the needs of your particular DCC system as to whether or not that's valuable. Fast clock if you're running in a, a, um, a, a on layouts with um, with a well if you want a fast clock use it use it number of throttles um, I generally stick to two um, but if you're only ever driving one loco you might as well clear up the um, the stuff on the screen and just go to one if you really want to run three that's fine but it starts getting a little untidy on a um, on a small screen on a phone it's quite practical on a, a tablet. Uh, on that score, if you do want to, to create some extra space, something I tend to do, um, there are ways of, of creating some extra space. Um, you've got a certain amount of space on screen here for the sliders and the buttons and the, this top and bottom row. Um, they can be rearranged or resized. So if we go into the slider button and button preferences, um, one of the things I tend to do, so I increase the slider height. Um, and I display the speed buttons and I tend to slide I don't particularly like the slider um, you know it's a, one of those personal choice things again but I, I tend to get rid of it the last button really is only relevant for things like the um, uh, the MC2 uh, the, the dedicated controller it's not, oh, and also for uh, game pads it's, uh, if you're using your screen I would never set that um, okay, and if we go back and out and have a look at how that looks, 
So that's rearranged the, the screen somewhat. I can save, uh, if I bring up another one, bring up that one there, you can see we're still pretty compressed. Um, you know, we've got a lot of functions in there we can't easily see. So if we go back into the preferences, what I can further do um, is decrease the loco button height, which gives me that, which is, gives me a little bit of extra space, but again, not a lot. And then the final big thing in terms of saving space is under swipe up down preferences, we can go into immersive mode, immersive mode or full screen mode. So now I've lost the bar on the top and the bottom, that will actually disappear shortly and I can force that to, if I just swipe it and yeah, just come back, uh, it disappears on a timeout. But now I've got a fair bit more space on screen but I've lost those top and bottom rows. If you use your emergency button or if you're looking for your uh, fast clock then this is not particularly practical. To get back to that uh, to your menu which is now hidden you just swipe down and that temporarily takes you out of that mode. Um, swipe down again brings you back. So if I go back in there again um, what can we do? Um, so that's most of the slider button preferences, direction button preferences. Uh, personal choice, um, the default is to have forward and reverse. Logic to me always said it should be reverse and forward, well you can change that. So if I go into there, and now forward and reverse are the other way around. Um, go back in, preferences, oops sorry wrong one direction button preferences. What you can also do is swap them on demand, so that's the long press. Um, and you can also change the labels, I won't do that just now. So now, if I've got one loco running that direction and one loco running that direction, I can actually say, well, that becomes forward. Um, so I've got a visual cue as to which direction the locos are running. All I've done is long pressed and I can reverse it again by just long pressing there. Uh, otherwise a single press just works as normal. One of the things I find is I accidentally touch the, um, uh, the direction buttons while I'm trying to control the, the button because I'm looking at the loco rather than looking at the screen. Um, so you can fix that or well, you can assist that by changing um, in, oh, remember where it is, oh right, okay, a bit further down, under throttle control preferences, we can change um, direction change while moving, I can turn that off. There's a similar related one that says stop on direction change, um, I won't go into that just yet. So now, the moment I start to power up, the reverse button, whatever direction I'm going, is disabled. So if I stop that, I'm in reverse, I'm going forward, I can't accidentally rev reverse the loco by touching that button, it's disabled. Uh, when I stop, they both become ena enabled again, and I can continue on. Um, there's another one that allows me to disable that uh, the loco button selection, so I can't accidentally get into the loco button selection screen. And that's, oops, hidden, <laughs> it's in here somewhere, there we go, I want to select, yep, so allow selection while moving, so if I do that, now the moment I get under power I can't accidentally select the loco either. So if we go back into preferences, um, right. So um, as I said, you can change the labels for the direction buttons. Um, that this works slightly differently, and it's really intended if you prefer uh, things like east-west to be the labels of your uh, the directions on your. Um, layout or up down or for, uh, or north south whatever the case may be or left and right if you prefer um, and they can be changed um, I won't go into that one just now 
swipe up down preferences I showed you with the immersive mode one there before there's another uh, one uh, which is um, swipe up so in swipe up there are more options than just simply going into immersive mode um, we can do things like hiding the web view um, again I won't go into that one now but the two that, that um, are, are worth looking at are the lock and dim or just simply dim um, if you're running a gamepad um, or a uh, or you prefer using the volume keys to control your, your train that one's possibly useful um, and um, if you're just looking to conserve power the dim screen one is is possibly useful um, I'll enable the first one uh, they function pretty much the same way except lock disables the keys I'll just show you how that works so when I swipe up the screen dims why would I do that? Uh, I do that to try and preserve power. One of the biggest consumers of power in a, in a phone uh, is, is the screen. So um, if I'm just running the loco, the loco's continuing on, I don't need to do anything with it at the moment. I can uh, do that, swipe up, uh, dim and lock the screen, uh, and uh, preserve the power in the phone until I actually then need to actually take control of the train again. But while it's in that mode, because it's locked as well as dimmed, nothing I do there has any effect on it. If I select the dim only, I still have control, it's just dimmed out. So, get swipe up again. Not behaving itself. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Yeah, misbehaving. So I swiped up to, um, to re-enable it. I've got control again back into preferences and the accelerometer preferences are new and they haven't been in the, the release version but um, what you can do is set an action on shake similar to the swipe up options in fact pretty much the same but um, with a couple of extra ones and what that does I'll set that to um, lock and dim as well and this is going to be it's intended to, to be used while it's in your hand but I should be able to activate it no, I can't. Uh, I might have to actually change the accelerometer threshold. I'll just bring the threshold down a bit so that it will react a little more readily. Seven. So now, so by bumping the phone, if shaking the phone, uh, it will. Um, it will lock and dim the screen for me. I'll do it again. <laughs> Alright, as I said, it's designed to be done in the hand, not trying to do it on a, on a desktop. Um, so that, that's another option for doing that, but it's not available in the release version yet. Um, okay, show local address instead of, instead, instead of the, the proper name, the JRMI name. Um, it's been truncated there. So this particular loco that I've got up there, you can see, is PA hash 1511 SND. Uh, and if it was a longer address, or if I had a consist with multiple ones, actually, I can just show you that. It gets out of hand pretty quickly. You, you, it's just a, a bit of a mess there. Um, I tend to prefer this one, so it only shows me the loco address. So if I look at that same loco, 11511, uh, sorry, 2511, it's now truncated it to just that. And if I bring up the same consist, so the second one there, get something a little more manageable on screen. Um, so, personal choice. And keep going down. Um, accelerate, and yeah. And the same deal with the function label. So at the moment you can see it's showing me the, the functions for those two locos. Well, it's showing me the ones for the lead. Uh, if I use set that, it will bring it back to the defaults. Um, I'll need to, to reselect the locos to do that. Okay. So instead of showing me the, the actual thing, uh, function labels as they appear in JRMI, it's just showing me the default ones that are set up by going function default. So that list there is what's being shown instead. Why would I do that? Um, primarily because we, I run in a club layout where we don't have the full um, uh, everybody's locos 
uh, included in the roster on all of the layouts. We have four layouts. Uh, and so when you do select something, you, you are, will often pick up somebody else's logos that do happen to have the, the same address uh, that are in the roster. Uh, and you get function labels that are just completely irrelevant. Um, so in a similar deal, actually, to you'll, you'll pick up the wrong name um, why, in, a, in a club environment. Therefore, it's useful for me to, to be able to just show the defaults rather than what JRMI is telling me. Moving right along. Okay. Um, voice response is only really relevant at the moment for gamepads, so I won't go into that one. And gamepads, it's and I'll, I've got some separate videos talking about gamepads, so I'll look about that and talk about that separately. The additional selected loco indicator, um, so either volume keys or gamepad. Um, I'll just show you the volume one because I don't have a gamepad hooked up here at the moment. So you've got a tiny little V by default um, that tells you which gamepad, uh, sorry, which uh, throttle the gamepad is controlling. So I bring up the second one. And if I want to swap between volume key controls, I touch the speed, and I've got my little V shows up there, my little V shows up here. But with the extra one, I now get that highlight around the loco select. Um, in this particular one, you get a double bar. Um, so it's just a, de a separate indicator, and it works the same way with the gamepad. You can uh, you get a different indication, uh, a more substantial indication of which uh, throttle you're controlling. Okay. Oops. Um, all right. Well, because we're going into throttle control, I might stop the video there.